What is up nerds? It is Reptile DIY here again, and today I'm going to be showing y'all how to make your very own giant spiky goth collars. So let's get started. <laughs> So these spiked collars are pretty popular these days, and to be completely honest, they're outrageously expensive. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to make your own all by yourself, but more importantly, I'm going to teach you the skills necessary to get your foot in the door of beginner leather working. So let's talk about supplies. So supplies are pretty basic. You can buy everything you need at a local leather working shop, whether that's Tandy Leather or whatever sort of country bumpkin store that you might have locally. I have a leather belt, I have a leather hole punch, I have a pair of leather cutting scissors, I have some rivets, I also have some spikes. I will talk more about the spikes in one moment, but here I have a Loctite compound. Now this Loctite compound is optional, but it will keep the spikes on your collar a lot longer. Because nobody wants their spikes falling off. So let's talk about our leather. Personally, I like to shop secondhand at thrift stores and buy used leather belts. They're cheap. They're abundant, and it saves me a lot of money instead of going to an actual leather store and buying rolls of leather. Just go to a thrift store and buy a full grain a leather belt. It'll cost you a few bucks. And also guys, if you are vegan and you want vegan materials, the thrift store is the best place to buy some synthetic leather. I have found the best the vegan leather belts at a thrift store. Next up, we're going to talk about spikes. Now these are going to be the most expensive part of your collar. Personally, I live in North America, so I only shop at studsandspikes.com. They have the best quality spikes, the best quality studs. Whatever you do, do not buy your spikes off of Amazon. Don't buy them from AliExpress. You're going to get some garbage quality spikes. Studsandspikes.com is the way to go, and they're not paying me to say this. I just know from experience. Today, we are using the largest commercial grade spike that you can buy. It is a three inch tree spike. Next up, we're going to talk about pendants. Now, pendants aren't necessary, but since we're making a gothic color, I'm going to talk about pendants. Now, you can use any pendant you want, whether that's a pentagram, a baphomet, a sigil, whatever you want. Personally, I'm using a cheap crucifix that I spray painted black. Like I said, having a pendant is entirely optional, but I'm going to show you how to put one on anyway. So now that we have all of our supplies, let's get down into making this collar. First and foremost, I drew a sketch of what I want the collar to look like. Then I measured my neck. Now with your neck measurement, you're going to want to add six inches or so. This should be plenty of room to compensate for the strap side of your collar. And when you're all done, you can cut off any excess that you don't need. Alternatively, if you already have a collar that fits you pretty good, you can use that collar as a pattern. Just measure that collar out with your belt and just base it off that. That's what I like to do a lot. So once you have the measurements for your collar, you're going to take a pencil and you're going to mark everything out. We're going to mark out where we're going to put our spikes. Use a little bit of math so everything's even because nobody wants wonky spikes. I also marked off the buckle holes as well as the end of the collar. As you can see, I went back with a paint marker so everything's a lot more visible for me and for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Now we use our leather cutting scissors and we cut the end of our collar. It's going to look like that. Next up, we're going to use our leather punch and we're going to punch out the holes for the buckles. Now these buckle holes might be a little bit thick, so you might have to double it up depending on how thick your buckles are. Next up, we're going to punch the holes for our spikes. So we're going to punch a hole for the screw and you want these screws to be nice and tight. You don't want them loose at all. So you want to just be nice and tight and fit well. So we have our hole punched and you can see how tight that is. We're going to go back with our screwdriver and we're just going to drive that screw right through the leather. So the next step is optional. I'm going to take a little bit of my Loctite compound and I'm going to rub it on the end of that screw. This is going to keep your spike attached to your screw a lot longer than normal. It's not going to go anywhere with this uh, with this compound. This is more or less a fail safe, but it's not necessary. Now we just use our screwdriver and just screw that son of a bitch in there uh, nice and tight with our spike. It ain't going nowhere. And just repeat the process. It's pretty straightforward. So let's talk about our pendant. Essentially, I'm at the middle of my spikes. And in the middle one, all I'm going to do is poke a hole through a piece of leather, wrap it around my pendant, then rivet that leather onto my pendant. Then I punch a hole in that little piece of leather, and then I punch a hole in my collar. Essentially, this pendant is just going to hang right in the middle of the collar, and then we just run our spike through just like normal. Then we just continue the process to finish off our spikes. Pretty straightforward. These leather collars are insanely easy to make. And like I said, these are just some beginning leather working skills. So here's our finished collar. Looks cool. But you might be asking yourselves, Reptil, what if I want colored spikes? 
Well, just hold on to your butts because I'm about to drop a bomb on your ass. So you can paint your studs or your spikes. A lot of people don't know this. All you need is some spray paint of your choice color, some clear coat, some trash styrofoam, and some toothpicks. First thing you do is put your toothpicks into your styrofoam, and then you're gonna take your spikes and you're gonna put the toothpicks inside the cavity of your spike so they sit up nice and pretty just like this. Then you go back with your spray paint and you just do a bunch of nice, light, even layers. You don't wanna lay this shit on thick. I'd probably do three to five nice, light, even layers with plenty of time to dry in between. When you're all done with that, you're gonna wanna lay down your clear coat so that nothing chips. So here we are guys, all finished with our collar, with or without the paint. Hopefully you learned some skills along the way and maybe save some money. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the other videos I've made because I'm all about showing you guys how to DIY. Anyway, see you later, nerds.